Hello and welcome to the Coin Lady channel. I believe we have passed the worst of it. In the same way as an XRP group would. With what we went through, I assume the worst is over. As a matter of fact, I have more than one meaning in mind. I believe it is quite possible that, yeah, we have really seen the bottom, and it was in November of last year, if you're talking about the broader crypto markets and just thinking about the disaster of a dumpster fire that 2022 was for crypto markets. Have you heard the breaking news from yesterday evening, which affects us XRP holders in particular? If you haven't been following along, I'd be happy to fill you in. I won't do that here, but I should mention that I did once create a video that ran for about 40 minutes. It was not a verdict on summary judgment, which may have ended this matter, but one from yesterday that I released today. Yet, a trial by jury is possible. One of a thousand different things could happen here. But, we did obtain a highly significant finding from Judge Torres regarding the admissibility and non-admissibility of certain forms of expert witness testimony. This much, too, I must say. Nothing about it was ideal, yet Ripple came out on top. So I was sitting there reading it and thinking, really? I believe we have passed the worst of it. With the SEC, we've been dealing with this nonsense for almost two years now. The worst, though, is probably over at this point. That, unfortunately, is not something I can say with certainty. Possible outcomes here include, for example, a resounding victory for Ripple. In the event that this matter is appealed and ultimately reaches the Supreme Court, well then, that's cool with us. The following is a statement that I will later retract. What else, though, is the case that seems the most likely at this time? While I have my doubts about an overall victory for Ripple, this development has the potential to be quite beneficial for holders of XRP bonuses, provided that the token has a future. That it seems the most likely scenario to me. And in that scenario, as long as there is a way forward for XRP, you won't see appeals, even if the SEC obtains a technical triumph. Also, I alluded to this in my most recent video. Unless we receive an unexpected, incredibly awful judgment from Judge Torres, 2023 might be a really exciting year for cryptocurrencies given the current state of the market. I do not make price predictions, therefore I have no idea how high XRP could go if we get excellent news here. If, however, things turn out nicely for XRP holders, there could be some significant fireworks in store, depending on how Judge Torres phrases his judgment. I'm all for it, in fact. I eagerly anticipate it. But, I feel the need to make it clear that I do not come from a financial or legal background. Nothing I say or write should be taken as recommendations to purchase or sell any particular security. Just a hobbyist here that occasionally posts films to YouTube on various crypto-related topics. To illustrate my point, I'll use a recent Coringate headline. I don't think it's necessary for me to read the article because I've already said enough about the fallout from Judge Torres's ruling regarding the expert witness testimony in my past couple of films. And now, the big news from CoinGabe, XRP rises to 40 cents. The motion by the SEC to exclude testimony was rejected by Judge Torres. One of the concerns they had was whether or not the verdict would cause XRP price to rise. It's been what, almost 12 hours since the news broke, and at this point I find the whole idea to be very ridiculous. Even if you assume that people need time to digest it because it's illegal occurring, you can reasonably assume that it would have had the desired effect by now. But, really, I just don't buy that reasoning. If individuals are certain that things will go smoothly, as I believe they will, then they have already made their bets by purchasing large quantities of XRP. This is something that I believe many individuals have done. Now, what is it that will trigger it? I'm not going to pretend that this verdict isn't significant, it is. Spectators await developments. When discussing her motion for a summary judgment, that's exactly what everyone here is anticipating. Thus for the time being, XRP is trading at 37 cents. In spite of the positive developments we witnessed with Torres' verdict last night, the price of XRP on worldwide markets has not responded. With its current price of 37 cents, Bitcoin's total market valuation is $22,461, making it slightly more than $1 trillion and giving it a 41.74% share of the asset class. To put it another way, a fear and greed index for cryptocurrencies of 49 out of 100 indicates a balanced stance. 
The normal, you know, cute, cuddly little retail lemmings out there aren't afraid, though. They have no need to be afraid, and that gives me peace of mind. They shouldn't have to go through that alone. Will this year, however, mark a new record? Well, look at this. One of my favorite chart analyzers is Credible Crypto, and I've mentioned him before. As of now, he has 337,000 devotees. I believe, as has always been the case, that Bitcoin will be the coin that leads us out of the depths of the bear market. He was the only expert I follow that was predicting a new all-time high for Bitcoin this year until today. It always has, and it probably always will. There hasn't been any noticeable shift in human nature to make me think things will be different this time around, and that's great by me. Bitcoin remains one of my favorite currencies. Although it doesn't excite me, Bitcoin is something I appreciate. I have some and my prediction is that Bitcoin will be in the lead, with investors afterwards shifting their capital into other cryptocurrencies with varying market capitalizations. So, he still considers it to be the case. In addition, I will present the viewpoint of a second expert who has stated his belief that a similar outcome is possible. Also, this point of view is not easy to come by. Although they're in the minority, I admire the analysts who are willing to risk their careers by publicly discussing such controversial topics. Honestly, I hope they are accurate because that would be awesome. This could be the case, but I won't pretend to know for sure. Honestly, I'm relieved I'm not an analyst because I have anything to say. Yes, it's fine to use any YouTuber you like. YouTubers in general can expect criticism. And you could be writing about some completely different hobby of yours when writing about crypto. Just because you're putting yourself and your ideas out there into the world doesn't mean you won't get some criticism. But, I'm relieved that I'm not a technical analyst, as they seem to take criticism far more personally than, say, your average crypto YouTuber. Okay. My goodness, the technical analyst said, people can get quite angry if they're led to expect something and it doesn't pan out. That is why I'm not at all considering doing that. I will tell you right now that I won't be making any forecasts. Of course, someone by the name of Fry invited him to come here. Toshi, you have, in all candor, maintained this year's unprecedented level of credibility. Even though anything is possible, I think it's safe to say that this year is going to be rather awful. In the meantime until things calm down. His persistent self-assurance is his incredible crypto sharing. Affix the following text. Yup. Not a thing has changed. New record highs in 2023, rather than later, would make a lot more sense if I'm right that we're missing a last impetus for this cycle and that it has started. Despite the fact that such rapid price increases have already occurred twice in this cycle, most people still think they can't happen again. I get that the FTX crash was utterly unexpected, but at these record highs, with 73% of all Bitcoin in existence now in diamond investors' hands, I think most of the harm has already been done, and supply is constrained at levels never seen before. In other words, when we start jogging, we run far more quickly than most people anticipate. What I can say is this. Let's hope he's correct. I've also proven my point. It's not hard to see. No need to be a chart expert to figure this out. Most folks who plan to get out of the crypto market when prices dropped have already done so. After that, there are folks like me and you listening right now, and I'm prepared to wager that you're in the same position as me. The only people who are still interested in crypto at this point are the stubborn as hell types, like me. Also, you're not going to let yourself be rattled. As a matter of fact, I'd wager on it. That's a sizable audience, if you ask me. In fact, I include myself among that group. I just? When I say this, I mean it with all seriousness. I have no intention of being shook out of my position due to short-term market movement, so if I turn out to be wrong about crypto and it all falls to zero, I will write it to zero. Cryptocurrency is here to stay. I consider myself a strong believer in crypto's potential and utility in the long run, Period. Well, that's what makes me look forward to it so much. For some reason, I upload a new video almost daily. Another analyst who believes a new record high is conceivable this year was profiled in a daily hodl story. 
The article below is headed, Bitcoin burst to all-time high totally doable in 2023, and it states that analysts who anticipated a catastrophic Bitcoin crash in 2023 are wrong. Bitcoin reaching its all-time high this year is not impossible, according to an analyst who correctly predicted the huge crypto crash of May 2021. To support his claim that Bitcoin will recover from the bear market near the $20,000 level, pseudo-analyst Dave The Wave provides four arguments. The last time I mentioned them on my channel was probably quite some time ago, and I still can't find the video. I've mentioned them before. One of the analysts I pay attention to is he. On Twitter, he has over 130,000 devotees. The stuff he puts out is actually fairly often covered by a fairly well-known individual in crypto media. Yet this is what he posted on Twitter. Bitcoin could make a run at new record highs this year. This leaves him with four points to list in bullet form. First and foremost, a flatter rate of appreciation. It took two times as much time as the decline. Midway through the channel of logarithmic progression, at the number three. It's been accomplished in 425 of the 750 possible steps. As quoted, in order to plot Bitcoin's long-term fair value across up and down volatility cycles, the analyst employs logarithmic growth curves, or LCGS for short. In June of 2022, Dave the Waves GC changed his rating for Bitcoin to a buy. He thinks it's a good sign for Bitcoin. About eight months later, the price is still within his purchase zone, prompting him to opine, quote, perhaps a good to observe Bitcoin price and the LGC buy zone for a lengthy period. Those who aren't already long will make the most money by establishing a position, while those who try to trade the short-term volatility will lose out. This takes time, and it requires hedging the LGC model if you hold it. As quoted, People are going to be shouting at him if this doesn't happen, but I really respect it when analysts are willing to risk their careers to make a prediction. That's the lot of a social media chart guy, unfortunately. Who can say then? Perhaps they're correct. Perhaps such things do occur. And if not, one advantage of the way I invest in crypto equities is that I don't tend to do anything else once I've made a purchase. It settles the matter. That's what I believe, and I think history has borne that out. You're undoubtedly on the rise. In spite of occasional multi-year periods of stagnation or decline hey, it happens, stock prices have generally been rising throughout the past century. After collecting data for 14 years, we found that this holds true for crypto. The good news is that even if they're correct, I will continue doing what I have been doing all along, which is nothing. You could not be taking a more lazy or unattractive attitude to the stock market. Well, I see. Nothing fancy, but it actually does its job. The system is foolproof in every way. To be honest, that's all I'm after. To have that fulfilled would be enough for me. Now I can rest easy knowing that my crypto is safe. Not that that makes a difference in the grand scheme of things. It's just a topic that interests me, and it's fun to discuss, but in the end it's very irrelevant. Absolutely not. This, though, is quite neat. There's a lot to look forward to. Okay, now we're getting to the good stuff. In my opinion, the most entertaining element of the SEC case is still to come. To all appearances, the market downturn has reached its bottom. Ready or not, here we go. Obviously, I can't provide you financial advice. Nothing I write or say should be used as a basis for making financial decisions. That is an extremely awful idea. It's all over today. Please like and subscribe my channel. See you in the next video, bye.